Well, that was an interesting night. Unexpected. I'm walking back to the dock after having a great sleep and a hot shower and a hot meal and a couple of beers. As I pulled into the dock, there was a man standing there and I think his first words to me were, I've been sent to wait on you. <laughs> Apparently my mother had called the Scarlet Ibis, the local pub in town, because my GPS tracker hadn't been working and one thing led to another and she struck up a friendship with the owner and they put me up for the night. And it was wonderful after sitting in the rain all day. I was soaked and I got to hang up my wet clothes and sleep in a dry bed, not worry about pitching the tent in the rain. So just walking back to the dock now so I can make it official and walk and paddle the whole island. But uh, yeah, thank you very much to Pat and Les. That was great. And now, back through Holberg. So today, I have a 20 kilometer road walk to get to the Cape Scott trailhead. And then from the trailhead to the Cape, it's about 25 and a half kilometers, I think, of a fairly rugged trail. And then I have to get back from the Cape to the parking lot at least before I can get a ride out of here. So uh, got at least a couple of days before the end of this trip, but I'm not sure exactly when I guess it'll depend to some degree on how today goes. This is another uh, highway. I don't know when the last time it was graded was, but it is full of potholes. So I should at least reach the trailhead today. And I know that there's at least one place to camp between the trailhead and the beaches called Eric Lake. So I might get that far. Um, there's a beautiful beach called San Joseph Bay, uh, but it's a couple kilometers out of my way. So I might go there tonight, but I'll just see how I'm feeling when I get to the trailhead. I was able to check the weather forecast in town and it looks pretty good for today. It's foggy right now, but I think that's gonna lift. I might get some sunshine, and then it's gonna rain tonight and tomorrow. So, got that to look forward to. And then the day after that, it should be sunny. Sixteen K to the trailhead. So it's this pullout on the side of the road, out here in the middle of nowhere, and cell service right in this one little spot. It's quite considerate of them to put up a sign. I'm a little over halfway to the trailhead. It's been raining, misting really, for about half an hour. So, not really drying out much. <laughs> but, uh, it's not a bad walk so far. Apparently there's a tree behind me there, about half a kilometer away, somewhere in the forest, that is 3.36 meters, or was it 4.36 meters in diameter at breast height? 
more than 14 feet in diameter. It's a Sitka spruce. Um, I was thinking about trying to go find it, but there's really no signage or indication of how to get there. I have the coordinates, but I'm not gonna bother trying to bushwhack in this wet bush. But that would be pretty cool to see. All right, I am just starting the Cape Scott Trail. It's about 3 p.m., so I'll see how far I get. I think I've already walked 21 or 22 kilometers, so. This first part is very easy because it leads to San Joseph Bay Trail, which is wheelchair accessible, I think. The rest of the trail is not gonna be like this. This is the trail. And now a boardwalk. And back to mud. This beautiful old corrugated road from when there was a settlement out here in the early 1900s. We tried to farm this land, if you can believe it. It's just all swamp and rain. We gave up. This is the trail and the alternate. <laughs> I don't know if it's much better over here. It's always a compromise between speed and having Mud up to your knees. So that's Eric Lake, straight ahead. And this is the trail that continues on to the ocean. There's a campsite just up here at Eric Lake, but I've only gone a couple kilometers on this trail and it's still probably 3.30 in the afternoon, so I have lots of time. The problem is, the next spot to camp is another 12 kilometers or so. And it's gonna be pretty slow if I'm trying to avoid the mud. So I might just be slogging through it if I wanna get there before dark. So we shall see. Really big spruce trees here at the Eric Lake campsite. I don't know if you can see it through there, but there's a swan, a white swan on the lake. Here's a big spruce. I don't know if you can see how big it is. So this is actually my third attempt to get to Cape Scott. The first time we didn't even get to the trailhead there were eight or nine of us in my friend's converted school bus and uh, we were driving down the highway and I saw that he was drifting over the white line towards the ditch and I thought maybe he had fallen asleep or something. But then I noticed flames coming out of the gear shift and uh, then I noticed that the cabin was filling with smoke and he pulled over and said, everybody out. And we sat on the side of the highway and watched the bus burn. So that was attempt number one. And then uh, second time I came with Nikki, I don't know, five or six years ago. And oh, slippery. 
and it was pretty nice the first day. But then it just pissed rain. We made it to the first beach and ended up just staying there for a couple of nights because we didn't really want to leave the shelter of our tarp. And it was beautiful and we had everything we needed there. So uh, we didn't get to the Cape. So hopefully this time I will make it. I'm up. Whoa! That's some slippery mud. I don't remember it being this muddy. There's uh, tons of traffic this year and tons of rain compared to most years, I think because of the pandemic. Everyone's out camping. And it's a rainier year than usual here, apparently. I mean, it's always rainy here, but this is a particularly bad summer. Well, I just took my first fall of the day. Uh, my pack and my hands took the brunt of it. But, uh, when you're trying to avoid going straight through the mud, uh, it's almost inevitable. Whoa, I almost fell again there. It's so slippery here. There are fewer and fewer of these boardwalks as I get farther away from the trailhead. Could just be my imagination, but that was the first one I'd seen in a while. I started out today in my Gore-Tex socks, um, walking on the road because my shoes were soaked from yesterday and my socks were already wet, but I thought the Gore-Tex socks would help, but I just found them sweaty and it's kind of wet already. So hopefully they'll still be good, maybe tomorrow. My socks will still be wet, but I don't know. Boy, this is what I'm working with here. Oh. Oh. Whoops, that was a big splash on my feet. I think I'm the only one out here in running shoes. <laughs> Everyone else I've seen is wearing big leather hiking boots with gaiters up to their knees. That's how I used to hike. And it's sure nice having dry feet, but uh, it is slower. Kilometer eight. I'm about halfway, almost halfway to the beach I want to get to. It's 5.18 p.m. So, uh, two hours, 20 minutes to do eight kilometers. I should be able to get to the beach before dark if I can maintain this pace. I've been going pretty hard, so I don't know. I might slow down a bit, but... Um, as long as it doesn't get any worse than this, I'm hopeful that I'll uh, find a campsite. This is the kind of thing that you can either do quickly or very slowly. Ah, I'm trying to stay dry. So, well, it's not dry, I'm already soaked, but... Actually, I don't know why I'm trying to stay out of the mud. 
just a habit, I guess. Oh, I'm back on the corrugated road. It's just all cut timbers laid across the path. It may have one time been a wagon road. I don't know. I can't remember the history. Look at how straight this path is. This section through just swamp. So I guess it doesn't really make a difference where you put it. You may as well make it straight. Because if you venture off Beautiful wet coast swamp. Every once in a while I get to something like this. <sighs> and I have to pick my way around. It's about 6 p.m. now. I've gone 33.8 kilometers today. 21 miles and uh, I'm starting to feel it I'm getting a little tired but I still have six more to go to where I want to camp so I'm gonna push ahead well I don't really have much option it's either uh, <laughs> mud or salal and swamp so I keep going and in a couple of kilometers, I get to a junction. The nearest spot to camp is another two and a half or so from the junction, but it's kind of out of my way for, it's not on the way to the Cape, so I don't really want to do that. And I've been there before with Nikki and the only water source there is at the far end of the beach. It's like a kilometer or two to get water. So uh, I could stock up before I get there, but I just don't even want to be there in the first place. So I'm gonna try to get to the beach that's on my route. First I have to deal with this. I just passed the kilometer 14 marker and I'm gonna make it to the beach. I can feel it. Not dead yet. It's gonna be one of my longer days though. It's 7.30. It's pretty dark in the forest. Footage is probably terrible, but I just wanted to tell you that I can hear the surf. So I must be close. So a bird just shit in my face. <laughs> so, uh, welcome. Got some in my eye. Oh, this is beautiful. What a change from the forest. Waves are pretty decent. I think this will be my home tonight. There's a bear cache nearby. Uh, the ranger cabin is just beyond that blue tarp up in the trees. About 30 seconds after I stepped onto the beach, the ranger <laughs> asked me for my permit, so it's a good thing I paid. It's the first time I've had to pay to camp on this trip. Everywhere else, they weren't, weren't collecting any fees. It's a quarter to eight, so I'm gonna quickly get my tent up. And this looks like a pretty nice spot, even though it is all sand. Kind of hate camping in the sand, but what are you gonna do? Sand dollars, dead ones. Just getting into my tent. It's starting to rain out there, tide's coming in, I hope I'm high enough on the beach. The tide is going to be pretty high tonight, it's 
kind of hard to tell how, how high it's gonna come. So I guess I'll find out. I'm exhausted. But tomorrow I will reach my final destination. Then of course I have to walk back. I don't know, I might just come back here tomorrow, leave my tent. It's supposed to be raining, so I might just leave the tent and hike out to the Cape. I was considering paddling, but if the waves are like this, uh, that won't be possible. I think I walked over 42 kilometers today. It's pretty good. Longest day, I think, of walking. But I need to get uh, get to bed.